Hey kids, want a cigarette? It's good for you. <clears throat> but you're not that stupid, are you? You know why? <sighs> because science defeated tobacco company misinformation eventually. And now we have to defeat these same guys again on another scientific truth, climate change. Listen up. Our ecosystem sustains all life. It is our sacred duty to protect it. Because no one can be an expert in all things human, fossil fuel lobbyists can trick politicians into thinking, All of this with the global warming and the, that, a lot of it's a hoax, it's a hoax. It's one thing to seek energy independence. It's a whole other to resist any reduction in fossil fuel emissions at all. In four years, we've slashed over 100 protective regulations, which increase fossil fuel use and profitability. No more incentivizing energy efficient cars, trucks, tires, lights, and no more collaborating to reduce emissions across the nation, across the world. They want us using more, not less. Let's highlight just a few of these 100 slashings from the prior administration. Lax fuel economy standards. California can't set its own standards. We're out of the Paris Climate Agreement. Lax on methane emissions, which is much worse than CO2, 50 times. And we don't even have to measure or report it. And while we're at it, let's get lax on hydrofluorocarbons. Those aren't as abundant, but they're 11,000 times more potent than CO2. Let's refuse to label CO2 as a bad thing when calculating impact. In fact, let's get rid of any goals to reduce CO2 emissions. Remember the Deepwater Horizon disaster? The regulations to prevent another one are gone. Trust me, it goes on and on. They tell poor citizens that we're doing this for you to protect citizens from costs and regulations. It's right in front of our faces. Anytime a US city proposes new public transit, which would reduce emissions, bam, Americans for Prosperity, the Koch brothers, start a multi-million dollar campaign to stop it. And they do all this to help people. Awfully noble of them, but it's interesting that in addition to fossil fuels, these guys have financial interests in asphalt production, car parts. But let's reserve judgment. Let's look at their history. These lobbyists were specifically hired for their prior work in the tobacco industry. Let's see what the history shows. Early on, they pushed physicians to proclaim the benefits of smoking. But when science mounts against your product, doctors and scientists bail. But wait, smoking has serious consequences. They wouldn't lie to create doubt about the science, would they? I think there's a great deal of doubt as to whether or not cigarettes are harmful. Smoking may be hazardous, it may not be. None of the things which have been found in tobacco smoke are at concentrations which can be considered harmful. Well, there really isn't a scientific consensus. No, I think that the, the scientists who, who make statements like that are making political statements, not scientific statements. <laughs> These guys go on news shows doubting that smoking is a threat. Scientists are making political statements. Smoking is one of the dumbest health decisions an individual can make. Smoking causes blood vessel disease. That's heart attacks and strokes. Lung disease. COPD, emphysema, cancer, not just in the lungs, but in all of the cells of the body. Smoking plays a role in one out of five early deaths. Talk about cost. What about the cost of human life? Do you know anyone who died earlier than they should have because of tobacco smoke? These companies must not have known yet. They wouldn't lie about something so serious just to make more money. Would they? The tobacco companies knew smoking caused cancer in the 50s. It is not known whether cigarettes cause cancer. They knew nicotine was an addictive drug in the 60s. Yet 30 years later, the CEOs of all the big tobacco companies stood up under oath and told Congress that nicotine wasn't addictive. Now, I smoke four packs of cigarettes a day. I am 55. You wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Tell me if I don't look 20 years younger than this. Poor scientists. Today, climate deniers treat them the same. But in case lying about the science doesn't work, you could always label regulations communist. That's the way freedom dies. Today it's smoking. 
But what will they try to regulate next? What will they try to regulate next? What we can say, what we can read? I don't want Big Brother breathing down my neck telling me what to do. Get everyday Americans to be your freedom fighters. But in the end, they blame. Blame for smoking should be placed upon smokers. And if you question their antics. Well, they want to keep up sales. After much delay and profit, we get protective regulations. Great job conniving, which continues in the new job. Slashing regulations and stacking the deck against new ones. Two justices oppose regulation. A former coal lobbyist who sued the EPA 13 times was placed as its head. Then he removed scientists from the Board of Scientific Counselors and appointed industry representatives. Fortunately, he was released for fraud. Unfortunately, he was replaced by another coal lobbyist. Communism? They say green initiatives are red on the inside. Oh, where would we be without our gallant fossil fuel and tobacco lobbyists to protect our freedoms? Yeah. A crew of their highly paid spokesmen now feed citizens garbage about the benefits of elevated CO2 and a warming planet. Let's listen to some of the lies that are circulating. CO2 is plant food? It's a good thing. Bad logic, man. Blood sugar is cell food. Too much can kill you. Diabetes. Temperature always goes up and down, up and down. It's natural. Well, natural forces aren't going to save us. Right now, we're supposed to be in a down phase, but we're going up really fast. We're overpowering natural forces. CO2 is less than 1% of the air. You all are making too big of a deal about this. Yeah, but... The crust is 1% of the Earth. It matters. Oh look, we had a cold day in Tennessee. It's a snowball. And in DC. First of all, cold fronts don't disprove climate change. Watch. Ever wonder why these freezers don't have doors? Ah, but they do. Air doors. They blow hard enough to keep the cold in and the warm out. The jet stream acts the same to hold the cold in the north. Did you know that as climate change warms the poles, we see more weak and wavy jet streams? Paradoxically, that's one reason why warming may actually give some regions more cold fronts. Look at early 2021. Polar warming made the polar vortex and jet stream weak. This open freezer door made us colder and the poles even warmer. So, although it may cool the head for a moment... Oh my god, it's hot in here. Oh yeah, cool off. Leaving the freezer door open isn't going to cool the house in the long run. Look, Canada just hit 116 degrees. That's not cool. So, don't just pick the cold cherries and don't pick a warm one from 1934 and say it was just as hot back then. Because when you look at the whole picture, well, Tell me what you see. We all know climate change is bad, don't we? Many ask, how could we humans possibly influence something so big? Isn't that arrogant? Hold on. Let's zoom in and take a closer look at some of the smaller things that we're made of. Every millimeter of our body is lined by countless capillaries. I doubt this red blood cell holds arrogant, self-important views. But considering that trillions of these blood cells fill vessels which line every speck of every organ in our entire body, it's common sense that they matter, and we could only last seconds without them. Like the red blood cell, we live in a world that's much bigger than us, but we are growing in number exponentially. It took us 10,000 years to go from 4 million to 700 million people. 200 years later, we're approaching 8 billion. For a world that's billions of years old, that is stunningly fast. But we aren't just growing in number, we're growing in power. Our ancestors only affected CO2 by clearing forests for farmland. Don't get me wrong, we're still doing that, 
or even clearing rainforests, the Amazon is in trouble. But since the Industrial Revolution, it's been all of our cars, planes, trains, buildings. We use a lot of fossil fuels. Our daily volume of oil, 101 million barrels, is more than an hour and a half of Niagara Falls flow, not even counting natural gas and coal. When you multiply our great number and great power together, it's a massive impact. And like that little red blood cell, we line every speck of this planet. Added together, we matter. Take a look at how CO2 suddenly shot up after the Industrial Revolution. But upon seeing this, many smart people have asked, What would the climate look like right now without human activity? Meaning, CO2, what's the big deal? We've only changed the average global temperature, one Celsius, about two Fahrenheit degrees. And here, the best answer to a good question is, it's not all about our current location. It's about our trajectory. If we continue unchanged, where do we end up? Lunar lander. It's not rocket science, but you have to plan ahead. Decelerate now? Ah, not yet. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. Let's try now. Start to slow down. Oh, oh, oh no, that was too late. I'm just going to take my foot off the gas a little earlier. And, ah, yes, no one has to die. Seems I've learned my lesson. Success was a matter of deciding here instead of here. Many intelligent scientists are concerned business as usual could yield up to 4 degrees Celsius, 7 degrees Fahrenheit this century. It depends on many factors. Some worry we could eventually go even higher. This isn't about a few degrees. It's about a resulting unprecedented increase in droughts, starvation, fires. We've seen it in the news. It's only going to get worse. Our west coast, you can see it from space. Increasing hurricane damage. More temporary flooding. Poor Houston. Melting ice caps. Permanent coastal flooding. Where would all the Bangladesh refugees go? Is this what we want to leave to future generations? Shouldn't we prevent this rather than expect them to adapt to it? People can't even share toilet paper during a pandemic. Will this all change in the future somehow? Will people tear down their walls and share their food and land with refugees with open arms? I think there's going to be war. Now a lot of people reason, hey, don't worry about it. If we start to get in trouble, we'll take our foot off the gas pedal. However, it's worth noting that this vehicle doesn't work that way. Once you press the gas pedal, it stays pressed. Trees take thousands of years to remove CO2 from the air. What's worse is that there's cascades. You know, positive feedback loops that speed things up. You ever play Bejeweled? With more fires, there's less trees to pull CO2 out of the air, which speeds things up. Permafrost melts, methane's released. A terrible greenhouse gas, which speeds things up. The ice caps melt. Less of the sun's rays are reflected. More heat is absorbed, which speeds things up. And the brake doesn't work either. That's probably worth knowing. Understanding how this gas pedal works you can see why we're so upset about the numerous legislative efforts that block fossil fuel reduction in lights, cars, and energy. There's even rules in Arizona, Nevada, and Florida against using solar panels. I swear, you'd think they were trying to... Walk outside, you may think, I don't see any fast changes. 
But you have to remember, in a world that's billions of years old, changes that happen over centuries or decades are sudden. Who do you want calculating our trajectory? Geniuses who calculated trips to mobile celestial bodies millions of miles away on their first try? Geniuses who docked the International Space Station on autopilot? Our top institutions, 97% of all scientists? Or the other guys who are trying to sell you cigarettes and include in their mix flat earthers who don't believe NASA either? So, let's see their motto again. They say they want to protect citizens. They want to protect your jobs because change will kill jobs. No, it's change some of the jobs to jobs in clean energy. Next, reducing cost is important, but long term, I think these guys are increasing cost. They'd have us kick this can down the road until these disasters snowball into catastrophic expense in money and human life. But where will they be when this hundreds of trillions of dollars day of reckoning comes crashing down on those who come behind us? Gone. At their old jobs, these guys didn't really care about who's alive now, so I don't think we'll be able to sell them on those who come behind us. Next. They want to protect you from regulations. They say they just don't want top-down regulations as if they're communistic. Don't smoke their garbage. <laughs> Good regulations don't make us communistic. They make us compassionate. It's not about the top-down. These guys just don't want anything affecting their bottom line. We need to push through all of their propaganda to get to you. Humans are powerful. Nothing can check us but ourselves. But some people will never listen to warnings. It doesn't matter what you say. Look how many people still smoke. But the question is, do you care? Do it for those who come behind us. We can't let industry hijack half of our politicians. We need our compassionate pro-life Republicans who care about life to care about this issue. This is a democracy. You hold all the power. Call your state senators and representatives now. Voice your support for green initiatives in infrastructure bills. And this, how is it even possible? Carbon tax, carbon dividend. A simple bipartisan plan to address climate change that respects businesses and minimizes big government rules for the long run. Click the link in the description below.